I-5 North was completely blocked with spun-out cars. Many people abandoned their cars altogether, and cold weather is forecast into the weekend. School districts in the Portland metro area are reporting that a large number of students are stranded by tonight's storm. Beaverton School District says it has as many as 900 students still in the buildings. Most of those students were stranded after they had a late bus pickup time and transportation was unable to arrive. Portland Public School says it also has students stranded at schools and on buses in the wintry weather, but district officials do not know how many kids were affected. For a complete list of school closures and delays, you can find those at our website, opb.org slash school closures. This is OPB News. Support for NPR comes from NPR stations. Other contributors include the Pajamagram Company, offering <laughs> matching holiday pajamas for the whole family, including cats and dogs, and with Charlie Brown and Norman Rockwell themes, in knits, fleece, and flannel. More at pajamagram.com. This is Think Out Loud on OPB and on KLCC. I'm Dave Miller. Portlanders have reported almost 2,000 coyote sightings this year alone. Serial Rasmussen is collecting this data in her role as a researcher and project coordinator for the Portland Urban Coyote Project at Portland State University, where she's pursuing her PhD. But she's not just studying the behavior of these adaptable and often sneaky canines. She's also interested in the way Portlanders respond to them. Serial Rasmussen, it's great to have you in the studio. It's great to be here. Well, I thought we could start just with uh, a sound that, that many Portlanders and other Oregonians may be familiar with. So what goes through your mind when you hear this? Um, so I think that this is a great example of why coyotes are nicknamed the song dog. You know, they really do have a wide variety of vocalizations. And this is probably a pack that's sort of letting other coyotes know that they're, they have this territory um, or a pack that's recently come together. And I think the most interesting thing to me about the, this type of song is they have this kind of yip howl um, that has a really varied pitch and frequency. So a couple, that could be just a few coyotes, but it sounds like a lot more coyotes because they're sort of overlapping sounds in this really interesting way. You mean they could be just two or three? Or, yeah. Because I mean, it really does, it sounds like, you know, seven or eight or 10. Yeah. Sounds like a chorus. Yeah, definitely. And it's hard to say, but they definitely, you know, just, yeah, two or three coyotes could sound like eight or 10. You grew up in Weston, uh, near Pendleton in Eastern Oregon. What was the, the human coyote? Coyote relationship like there? I certainly wasn't an expert, but I, from my own experience, we definitely had a different perspective on coyotes. Um, when I heard or saw coyotes in eastern Oregon, I, it was a quite interesting, exciting event, but it wasn't very unexpected. We heard coyotes pretty often at night um, near our home, and they definitely, um, I think, a lot of people you know, had concerns about coyotes. We sort of thought of them more, more as vermin or something that could potentially get um, livestock or something like that. How does that compare to the, the way you've heard people talk about coyotes in the Portland metro area? So people's reactions to coyotes in the metro area are really varied. Um, most people that reach out to me directly have kind of really much more polarized views than we've found overall in Portland. Um, so some people are really excited about seeing a coyote. They want to know, um, you know, how they can have that happen again, and that they love the experience and think that it's really amazing. And some people are really concerned and really don't know what it means to see a coyote in Portland, weren't maybe expecting it, um, and are worried about about the dangers that a coyote might pose. What kinds of things? I mean, if they're worried, what do they say that they're worried about? The most common thing that I hear is that people are worried about um, coyotes and their pets. So people in a study that, or a little survey that we did, um, people cited that as their main concern. So concern about coyotes attacking pets, um, especially small dogs and cats. Are they right to be concerned? Yeah, I think it's a valid concern. I think it's important to note that coyotes, you know, are typically they not dangerous. They don't really pose much of a threat to humans. That's extremely rare. Um, but they will take a cat or a dog. It's maybe not as common as a lot of people think. Um, but it is something to 